Welcome to this interview with one of the ancients, the artist, the visionary, the vampire, Miguel. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Lord Miguel Valentin. I am from House Hidden Shadows, one of the original three legacy houses of Gotham. I'm also the founder of Theater de Vampires, which is a performance theater troupe, where we do performance art on stage, incorporating needle play, blood play, suspension, and all brought to you in the genre of the theater. I'm also the founding member of the Undead Poet Society. That was a project that I started, I'd say in 2000, five where we uh we brought original slam poetry to otto's shrunken head with the blessings of uh lord father vincent may he rest in the cosmos um i am a professional tattoo artist and i have been for the last 25 years uh, as well as a body modification artist so I was, uh, I was tattooing in Harlem. Uh, I like to call Harlem my home, uh, even though I've relocated. Uh, I spent 20 plus years in Harlem tattooing and body piercing and doing performance art. And um, I got an invite to this, uh, this party called the Realm of Darkness. And it was, uh, it was a vampire party. And I was like, wow, this sounds interesting. And uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I, you know, I, I was at a point in my life where I was a sponge. I wanted to absorb everything. I had been, uh, I had been detained for a few years prior to this. And when I uh, re-entered society, I was, like I said, a sponge. I wanted to try everything. So this party intrigued me and I went to this party and uh, I was enthralled because it was black and Latinos, my people uh, dressed differently, dressed in the Gothic fashion. Um, the, uh, the men in the, uh, in the, in the party were, I, I, they were either the romantic uh, Renaissance vampire or they were this warrior style vampire that I had never experienced before. And I was like, this is amazing. This is beautiful. I love this. And and the women were also to the extreme where they were very in a Victorian style uh, ball gown dress, or they were basically half naked, uh, strutting their stuff. And what I thought was very cool was that um, there was this, uh, there was this rule or un, un, unwritten or I should say unspoken rule that you couldn't touch anyone unless you were asked to or you were permitted to. It was a, it was a kind of a chivalrous type of thing. And, uh, you know, I thought that was amazing because I'd been to clubs before and that was always a problem. You know, if I brought a good looking woman to, to, the, to the party, seven to a hundred guys would be trying to hit on them and one would get out of line and then that, and that would screw up the whole night. And I didn't see that. I saw guys grabbing hands and kissing the hand in a chivalrous manner and letting women walk by. and Just, there was this attitude of respect and I was drawn to it. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so I had, a, I had a great time at the party and um, I believe I went back to another party and um, I felt so comfortable there that um, I got on the dance floor. I, I love to dance to industrial music. And that was just, you know, I had never, I had never experienced any of this before. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a very tribal feel to that dance floor at the Realm of Darkness. And it was a, uh, it was like a testing ground kind of. And I, and I really liked that. And not in a, not in a violent way. Uh, just kind of like let, let's see your moves like like almost like old school uh, hip-hop dances 
you know, where they, you'd bring your crew and they'd bring their crew and you'd battle it out on the dance floor and there'd be no violence or anything like that. But there was that, that energy, you know what I mean? That like, you better bring it. And uh, I had I had an amazing time. I had a great time. I got exposed to a whole lot of new music that I had never been uh, been exposed to. Um, and I was just like, yeah, this is it. This is hot. Um, and I think a few weeks later, um, I'm in the tattoo shop uh, up on 125th Street, um, and Lord Xanatos, uh, he who shall not be named, and uh, Lady Tanisha, as well as Lady Darkstar, showed up at the tattoo studio. And they were like, is Miguel here? And I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm in trouble. What, did I, what happened? What did I do at the party? I must have screwed up. Uh, and at that time, I was seeing, um, we were dating. Uh, Lady Evie and I were dating at the time. We had not been married yet. And uh, they asked us to go for a walk, the two of us. And uh, they basically introduced me to House Hidden Shadows. And they said that, um, you know, we they were a, uh, a group that met regularly and their basis was uh, about family and about knowledge and most importantly about nonviolence, which, you know, that caught my ear because I had just experienced a lot of violence, uh, you know, four years prior. Um, and the fact that here was a a martial artist of a high caliber telling me that they're not about violence, they're about nonviolence, that intrigued me as well. Um, as well as the fact that um, they were into knowledge and they were, uh, they understood what um, visualization meant and what energy transference meant. And they weren't afraid to use the word magic. Um, and that was another thing that, that piqued my interest uh, because I had I had been doing my own self searching and, you know, uh, uh, dabbling in, in my own magic and learning about energy transference and how that applies to visualization and how to manifest things in my world, in my reality. And uh, this it just seemed like a perfect fit. And like by the end of the uh, by the end of the walk, we were like, uh, Lady Evie and I, we were like, what do you think about this? And she's like, I think we should think about it. And I was like, yeah, okay. So that's how that's how we answered. I said, well, I'm very interested. I appreciate you coming out here to see me. And uh, we just need a little time to think about it. They were like, okay, of course, absolutely. And I think it was like two days later, we were like, yeah, let's do it. We're in, we're in. And um, I became an official in initiate as well as uh, Lady Evie. And, uh, and so we would meet regularly to talk about, uh, talk about the party, talk about, because it was a monthly gathering, the, the Realm of Darkness was a monthly gathering that happened in Harlem. Uh, but it was also about meeting the other members, the founding members of the, of the house, as well as new members and people who were being initiated as like I was, we were. Um, and it just, I, I, I really connected. Um, and part of, uh, part of being part of House Hidden Shadows was being part of something bigger, which was the Gotham, uh, the, you know, the, the Halo, the Gotham Halo. And with back then, this is like, this is like 98. I think, yeah, about 98, the Court of Gotham would meet at the Raven Cafe on Sundays. And we had to go. And we had to go and show face and present ourselves. Um, and I thought that was interesting too. I thought, wow, there's, there's more, there's more of us, you know, it's not just these people. Uh, so that's how I got introduced to uh, the whole vampire scene. Um, at that time, Mother was just about finishing 
Um, and then there was the long black veil, but there was um, there was other other parties that were going on. That was really that was really my introduction to it was uh, the courts that happened, meeting the other houses. It was the it was the election for the new regent, and that's when I met Lord De Dredden. and he was voted in as the uh, as the regent. I think I have my dates correct. I'm a little foggy, but I think I have my dates correct. It's in 98, 99, um, and my elder Lord Lord Xanatos was. Um, voted in as sheriff at that time. So I was learning about all these things. I was learning about these different positions and that there was other houses um, and the monthly parties that were going on. And I was just like, this is this is great. I love it. I love it. I want to be a part of it. So I, I identify as a vampire. Um, I remember when they were like, OK, well, you get to you get to pick your scene name. And I was like, it's Miguel. And they were like, they were like, no, 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 you get to pick a scene name. I was like, yeah, it's Miguel. <laughs> um, so one of my uh, one of my first awakenings, because I believe you have multiple awakenings, but one of my first awakenings in the scene was at a at an event that we threw at the Hidden Shadows Realm of Darkness, but it wasn't a Realm of Darkness party. It was in conjunction with Lucas Zapira and the Hardcore Connection, which is a body modification uh, group that I'm a part of, and they throw uh, these events that involve suspension. And I'm talking about the hook suspension, the hooks through your back. So I've always had a fascination with uh, flying like I've always been able to fly in my dreams to the point where like I can think of I mean I know I'm in the dream but I want to go here and I will fly there like literally Superman style fly and then I get to where I'm at and then I land there and that was that was like a, a, a precursor to me learning a little bit about astral projection um, but the reason I bring it up is because uh, I met Lucas Sapira and I watched his work for years. He's a, a body modification artist out of France and the founder of Arcor. Um, and I was like, I need to meet this guy one day and he's going to help me fly in this reality. And I want to use this reality to help me project astrally, you know, through, I believe through and not always, but in some cases, pain can be a, a, a Kickstarter to another dimension or reality, if you will. And that's what I thought. And I and uh, I got to meet him and, you know, I was like, uh, you know, this is my dream. And he's like, yes, I will help you fly. And I was like, great. So we, you know, uh, we put together the party. We put the, uh, the whole concept together. And uh, back then I was a drinker and a partier a lot. And one of the rules was no drinking or no drugs for like three days prior to the event, to, to the suspension. So I did that. And before and then before the actual suspension, the people that were involved in the in the in the suspension, we did a power circle. And this is the first time I really shared energy on a on a on a very conscious level, like yeah, I've shared energy before, but not at this level. This was like literally a specific, we're making a circle. We're all going to give our energy together. We're all going to put it together and we're going to share it throughout the group. And I just like, whoa, this is, this is happening. And I did that. And then um, it was my turn to, uh, there was three of us that were getting suspended. And um, so I was the first one hooked. And um, so I, I, I got the hooks in and the rig is set, the rig is tight, like I could feel it happening. And then I look to my, my left and the two other guys, they're still getting hooked. They're still getting rigged up. So I knew I wasn't, it wasn't gonna happen for a few, for uh, like at least 10 minutes. 
So I would, and I had already had my energy ball together, man. I was like, I was ready for this. And it just, it, it, it just washed over me to the point where I passed out. I passed out and obviously I couldn't fall because I had hooks on me and there was people behind me and they stopped me. And while I was passed out, I saw what I saw the future in my in my mind like i was unconscious but i saw what 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 happened 15 minutes later so i was out for maybe like two minutes three minutes and i came to and i look and everybody's looking at me and they were like you okay you okay and i'm like yeah let's fucking do this and when i did the suspension i regathered my energy mind you there's like almost 300 400 people in the audience watching this and I regained my energy, I got my ball together, and when I went up, I just released my energy to all the onlookers there. And I just saw a wave of people that were like, they were like this, and then all of a sudden, they were like, what the fuck? And that was, that was my first awakening, I believe, in this, in this, uh, in this reality where I knew that this energy that I have could be shared with others on a level I never thought possible. To me, you know, the aesthetic is cool, the dress is cool, but it's all about the energy for me. Learning how to harness my energy, share my energy, receive energy properly, block energy properly, that's what that's what this was about for me and once that happened i became obsessed with with that portion of being a vampire the whole energy transference the bar just got raised like i i i could no longer like be down here and and just feed off of this now i needed this i i i've been on a i've been on a quest i'm still on that quest where when I walk into a room and there's vampires about, I'm looking for that light, that one beacon that stands out. And I'm like, that's who I want to fucking feed with. And not, mind you, I didn't say feed off of. I don't feed off of anyone. There's always an exchange. I always feel there has to be an exchange because otherwise I consider it bottom feeding and I'm not doing that. So yeah, so that was my first awakening. <laughs> I've been down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for the last seven years now. I made a major change in my lifestyle seven years ago uh, where I stopped drinking and stopped using drugs. These last seven years have been about personal, personal, um, personal mental health, uh, physical awareness, uh, re rest restoring restoring family and friends uh, and just working on myself. Um, and I believe that I am now at a place where I can do what I wanted to do, what I want to do. Um, and I've always lived by the fact that if there's something, if there's a void and I can't find it, then I need to make it. And I've done that in New York. I've done, I've, you know, I've also, thrown, I didn't put it in there, but I've, I've thrown, cause there's been, I've been in the, you know, S and M and BDM uh, scene for uh, uh, back in the day. And I found it lacking. And um, I'll share a story with you. I was at, I was at True one night and uh, it was Mr. Savita's night. And I didn't even know who Mr. Savita was at that point. And I'm watching this performance that's going on and I looked at my part and I was like, this is crap, this is bullshit, what is this? You know, and she was right next to me and she heard me and she was like, oh, you think you can do better? And I was like, well, hell yeah, I could do better than that. And she says, well, I pay my performers a hundred bucks a performance. I'll, I'll see you in three weeks. And I was like, did you just book me? She's like, yup. And I'm like, done. And boom, and I, I don't know, I'm a performer by nature. Um, you know, the stage does not frighten me at all. If anything, it's a place for, it's a platform where I could speak some truth if I get the chance. 
and I put together this this uh, this this uh, uh, this performance, and it was it was great. Blew them over, and I bring that up to say that eventually, when I found that the parties were lacking, I said, you know what? I'm going to find my own space, and I'm going to throw my own party, which I did. I did that for many years, uh, just like uh, that was the birth of the uh, the Undead Poet Society as well, because you know we go to these parties and I mean back then it was about partying and getting laid and looking beautiful right but you never knew anybody's name half the time and nobody spoke to each other nobody really conversed with each other and I thought what better way to get to know my community by then throwing up poetry night and when I did, like people came out of the woodworks that you wouldn't even believe were poets. And I included every type of poetry. It could be on bongos and guitar or whatever, spoken word, however you wanted to do it, just come and bring it. All I had to do was be original, you know? And so I say that because when, when there's a void, instead of complaining about, oh, why the scene isn't the way it is or, you know, whatever, I just make it and I just I fucking start it and say, OK, well, here it is. Come through. Uh, and that's what I did down here. I, I, I like I said, I spoke I spent the last seven years just working on myself and I feel that I'm in a place in my life right now where I'm comfortable. Um, my my financial is good. My home life is good. My mental is good. Uh, and there is a bit of a void down here in Fort Lauderdale or South Florida, I should say, uh, for the vampire scene and even even the goths team. So um, I was actually approached by a friend to say, hey, why don't you start a halo down in South Florida? And I was like, well, I don't know, man, I'm busy. I work six days a week and I don't really have any help down there. And we kind of just let it go. And then uh, I came back. I was I was I was in California at the time, and I came back. And before I knew it, I had this team that just I I, I guess I manifested it. I, no, I shouldn't say I guess I manifested it. I met this event planner. I met a, a public relations uh, uh, company run by this woman who was very interested in what uh, the idea I had. And um, before I knew it, I had this team. So. Uh, it started with the Halo. So I've officially started the Hell's Gate Halo here in Fort Lauderdale. And I call it the Hell's Gate Halo. At first, because, you know, we're in South Florida. And, and if you go any lower, if you go any further south, man, you're going to wind up in hell. Like, that's it. You know what I mean? You can't get much more south than us. Uh, but then somebody urged me and they said, you know what, go deeper, go a little bit deeper. Let's 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 find out something really about this. So I did a little research and I found out that the, um, the Bermuda Triangle, which is also called the Devil's Triangle, has three points. Bermuda, Puerto Rico, where I'm from, and Fort Lauderdale. The apex of the triangle points directly to Fort Lauderdale. So the Devil's Triangle, hence... We are Hell's Gate Halo. So that's how I came up with that. Um, so after you know setting up the Halo, the next basic step is to throw a party to announce uh, the Halo and to consecrate it. So I'm a planner and I, I'm into details. So I said I need I need some of my peoples. I need some of my people. So, um, and I wanted to do something more than just the party, right? I've always, I've always said that there should be more to this than just a party, right? So instead of calling it a ball, instead of calling it a vampire ball, I said, well, what's, what's more than that? And I did some research and I looked up the word symposium. And I found out that there was a book written by Plato, a great philosopher, and a symposium was something that they did on the regular. Uh, maybe every month or so, they would invite all the great minds to come together and to discuss a specific topic. And 
there would be a lot of drinking involved and there was a lot of uh, philosophizing and basically it was it was a drinking party it was a party but it had substance to it and so I was like that's it that's that's what I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it the vampire symposium because um, I want more I don't anybody could throw a party right we st I, I call I call it the vampire symposium it's a two-day event so the first day is going to be a banquet and I uh, found this beautiful venue at the Ocean Manor Beach Resort which overlooks the water and um, there'll be a multi-course uh, dinner I'm going with Spanish flavor Latin flavors right because I'm Puerto Rican and we're in South Florida baby so I'm gonna bring the sabor and an open bar from 6 to 11 we have this space from 6 to 11 so you can get your drink on uh, I have some musical uh, artists coming uh, I have a cello player coming and a harpist to provide uh, some background music because my halo is all about or I should say not my halo our halo or the halo Hell's Gate halo because I'm not running shit I'm I'm, I'm, I'm starting something that I want contributors to be a part of, right? I'm not looking to be the leader of anything. If anything, I'm just a co-contributor to this thing. Uh, and But my goal is to promote the arts. Everything that has to do with art, whether it's uh, tattooing, painting, uh, drawing, photography, filmmaking, uh, theater, dance, all the arts, right? That's going to be the goal, right? That's what I want to present. That's where, that's what I want to showcase. Uh, and one of the arts that I believe is becoming a lost art is the art of conversation. And uh, I believe uh, conversation uh, is, you know, it's key. It's communication. If, if I don't know what you say or or if I can't understand what you're saying, or if I can't give you the chance to speak your opinion, then I, I'm missing out. And I don't want to miss out. I want to taste everything, yeah? So the first day of the symposium, the banquet, is going to be about the art of conversation. So I've invited some very dear friends to come and give a five-minute speech if you will but it's more of an icebreaker on a specific topic of their choosing to spark the conversation during dinner so at each course of the dinner it's, you're thinking about four or five courses of dinner right because we have it from six to eleven obviously there'll be a cocktail hour then we'll sit down um but each one of these uh people some good friends i, I i'm honored to call them friends um, I've invited Magister Zaya, I've invited Magister Khalida, uh, your hubby, the Sultan Jabbar, Madam Lisa Webb will be joining us from Toronto. Uh, and these are all people that I respect and I love and I can't wait to hear what it is they have to say. And mind you, this is not going to be like a panel discussion that goes on for a half an hour. They're going to each pick a topic at each course, uh, whether it be about uh, what vampire love is, uh, what does a seeker do, what does uh, what does an elder do for a seeker, whatever topic, you know, it, the the general thing is going to be about vampire, right? Anything vampiric. I have a special guest, uh, Mr. The Vamp, the TikTok King, the King of TikTok Vampire. Jack Townsend will be joining us with his wonderful wife, uh, soon to be wife, their fia his fiance, Shay, uh, will be there. Um, and he will be reading some poetry because he's a he's an acclaimed poet. Uh, and these are the these are the highlights of the uh, of the first day of the symposium. Uh, food, drink, good conversation, and good content. The following day, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th will be a new moon. I have planned for the celebration uh, four 
well, three local DJs, uh, DJ uh, Danny Bled, DJ Lind uh, Linder Smash, and DJ uh, Lady Anime, as well as um, an international DJ by the name of DJ Lord Fur, will be DJing the music all night long. I have a, uh, a local band called Rux Vendetta that will be playing live. And I'll tell you, these guys are incredible. It's a three-piece band. And if I, the way I can describe it is if you took The Cure and Typo Negative and they had a baby, boom, you got Rux Vendetta. And the biggest thing about that really drew me to them was that you can dance to their music when they're playing live. They're so tight and it's so melodic and, and soulful and for lack of a better word, gothic. So I have these Tycho drummers that are coming and I have some fire performers that are coming and I have five uh, or I have uh, my friend Alexis Noventa from Puerto Rico will be doing a Shibari art uh, performance and all that will lead up to the actual consecration ritual where the five of us will present the five elements we will use those five elements and the uh i don't want to give it all away but um the uh the living altar that we will have will be holding the canvas for the blood sigil that i will make that night to consecrate the hell's gate halo and all five of us and the audience and everybody else who's involved will charge that sigil, charge it so that the future can be nothing but amazing and magical. And then it's just dancing and partying the rest of the night. And by the way, I know there's a lot of drinking, so there'll be past hors d'oeuvres all night. So you can drink and eat so you don't get too sloshed. <laughs> so there's two, it's a two ticket tier. Right there's a, the VIP, which includes both nights, and along with that ticket, um, I made a, uh, a, a commemorative T-shirt for the event, as well as an actual key, an actual skeleton key that says Hell's Gate Halo on it, and it has my onk on the back, and that key will be representative of you being a member of Hell's Gate. So that whatever event that we have in the future, all you gotta do is show that key. And you're like, oh, come on in, you're in. Let's go, you're in. So yeah, so that's what I got going on. And my daughter is also gonna perform at the banquet. Yes, she's uh, she's an acclaimed singer. She's she's really the pride, the pride of, uh, pride of my heart. And uh, she's coming of age, so it's uh, it's all everything has been aligned so well that I know I'm on the right course. I know I'm doing the right thing, and I want to share it. And I just want uh, everybody to have a great time, to know this is a safe place. That South Florida, Fort Lauderdale area, is a place where you can be whatever it is you want to be because vampires, werewolves, witches, creatures of the fae, other kin, you're all welcome. What I would say is if you're curious and there's something that's calling you, then come check it out. Uh, I'm not trying to recruit anybody or any of that. I hope that I can display the blessings that I've gotten by having the vampire mentality, right? and the gifts of magic that I've learned and received, um, I'm openly willing to share. Um, and it, it, it and it doesn't always have to be that deep for everybody. I mean, I, I, I've put together a list, you know, a, a, a bill of of great shit, great stuff to enjoy. You know, there's music galore, there's dancing, there's there's food, uh, and then you get a little deeper into the you know the consecration ritual. Uh, and those who want to know more, man, get on the Hell's Gate Hello page and, 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 and post a question or whatever. I'm on it all the time. The 
primarily we're you know we're, I, I'm trying to look for artists not to you know not to make money off of anybody but not every, not everybody is open to uh, certain styles and we are you know like you can post your art on the page and it will be accepted and promoted as well I wanted to I wanted to be a safe space you know where you can feel comfortable in your skin uh, and enjoy yourself and others of like minds as well as a tattoo artist I'm also a blood painter I paint with my blood uh, I am the vampire that gives blood and if you can look here this is one of my paintings I will have a showing of my work I put together a few pieces about two, three years ago. So the originals will be on display Friday the 13th at the at the party, at the uh, soiree. And I've aligned with a local charity here in uh, Wilton Manors where my studio is at. Um, and he's, his charity helps young kids learn how to write a resume how to interview, how to get a job, how to present yourself in these situations. So I'm gonna be auctioning off one of my paintings and donating 100% of whatever the proceeds are to uh, the Wilton Collective. And it's his specific uh, charity is called Julian's Fountain of Youth. I have invited one of my favorite Fang Smiths, the Lady Ra Ubasti who will be coming a week before the 13th, taking appointments to get your own set of fangs. So please check her out or get in touch with us through, uh, through Vampire Miguel on Instagram, uh, Miguel Valentin on Facebook, or miguelvalentin.com and shoot me an email. Um, or Miguel Valentin at, uh, no, I'm sorry, Vampire Miguel at Gmail. And send me an email and I will set up the appointment and I'll put you two together so you can get your own feather bangs. I was interviewed and I spoke about, um, you know, I look the way I look, I wear the fangs 24 seven. I'm very fortunate as a tattoo artist, I get to look how I want to look and nobody tells me anything. Um, but I also said that, I, you know, I, I wear this 24 seven to kind of warn people what they're about to get involved with. You know what I mean? Like you step to me, you know, you, you know what you're getting yourself into. I'm a predator and I'm here to, I'm here to exchange. And if you're down for that, then let's do it. Right. I'd like to add on to that though, that I have, I have added the word honorable an honorable predator because i'm sure that word predator you know especially nowadays can be taken in a wrong way right and what i mean by honorable predator is that of course everything has to be consensual right and when you come up on you come up on this you need to be aware that you're dealing with a vampire and that i'm willing to exchange with you i'm not just here to take from you because to me, I, like I said, I think that's bottom feeding. But an honorable predator will let you know, and I'm not gonna feed off of sheep, the honorable predator, that type of concept, because I'm still an apex predator, but you know, I, 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 I'd rather feed off of somebody who knows what the hell is going on in exchange or commune and make communion with each other. You know what I mean? I think that that just makes it more beautiful, stronger and more magical.